Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for coming today. I know this is a, we've got a very large crowd. We're excited to have a few chairs in the back. Thank you for getting those early. And the guys are helping around. So uh, obviously this is one of our semi-annual award ceremonies. Uh, Chief Deputy Hart is may or may not join us. He's <laughs> Now we can actually start. <laughs> so let me explain. Uh, Chief Deputy has literally drove over to Rexburg last night to work on the Lori Vallow case. And he's deeply, deeply involved with coordinates everything on the on the Chad Vallow and uh, uh, Lori Vallow case. So he had to be there this morning for very, very important meetings. And we'll probably have to fly back out of here Monday. So we appreciate his efforts of literally going from there to here today just to be here for this ceremony. So thank you, Chief. I know that was a, a heck of a strain, but appreciate you getting back here. So um, today we're, we, we take these opportunities to, to thank a lot of people in our in, in service with our agency and those who have had the opportunity to retire and uh, move on uh, in their lives and in their, their careers. So really, we think this is a very important um, aspect of what we do with this is something that we try to try to involve as many people as possible because as you can see by the number of, of individuals and families that are here it's not just important to the people that we recognize today it's important to the families that not not that they not to not just be here but to see what their folks go through on a day-to-day -day basis and why it's important that they have the support of each and every one of you uh, before we get uh, too deep into this uh, as you all know, our chaplain, Reverend Bill Roscoe, is normally here to give an invocation. Uh, Reverend Roscoe cannot be here today with a pre-scheduled uh, meeting, so I have asked Commissioner Brad Holton to uh, come forward and give an a invocation to, for us today. Thank you, Commissioner. Let's pray. Abba Father, we come before you with grateful hearts. We come to you all too often with our grocery list things that we need and that we're worried about. Today is an exception. We come before you with grateful hearts that people have attained excellence, that people we are proud to serve with, people that we are proud that protect us. So Father, we ask a special blessing on those today, everyone in this room. We pray for their safety. We pray for wisdom as they deal with difficult situations. And we just celebrate with you people who want and try to do the right thing. Be with this ceremony and bless the ceremony itself and the people that are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I really appreciate you doing that. Um, speaking of traveling, I just flew in from Washington, D.C. after being back there for in your in your swamp. Not my song. <laughs> little humor. Uh, damn little. Whatever. Oh, by the way, I swear a lot. Sorry. I know you got kids here. I'll try to reframe from the worst of them. But, um, so, you know, it's, it's an Irish Catholic cowboy sheriff. I don't know what else you would expect. Uh, but I, I, I brought a couple of, of points of interest just because this is a very tumultuous time in our country. It's a very tumultuous time for law enforcement and what the sheer magnitude of what law enforcement faces. But not just law enforcement, the citizens of our country. So I've had the opportunity, obviously, uh, I serve on the National Sheriff Association Executive Committee. I, I was just moved into the first vice presidency of the National Sheriff's Association. So I'll be taking the reins as president a year from June. And it gives Idaho the opportunity to be represented as well as the Western United States. And part of those Western United States is our southern border. And when we talk about border issues, we don't just talk about the southern border, but the northern border and our maritime borders as well. But we have had um, unprecedented support uh, in, in taking part in two summits across our country. We had a summit in Sierra Vista, Arizona about three months ago, and we had the tenants of the National Sheriff's Association who sponsored it. The, the Southwest Border Sheriff's Coalition, the Texas Border Sheriff's Coalition, and as significantly, the, uh, the Western States Sheriff's Association, which represents all 17 states west of the Mississippi. And then 
uh, as importantly, again, the national, or the, excuse me, the major county sheriffs association of this country. So the cities like Miami or counties like Dade County, Miami, uh, Los Angeles, uh, in near Dallas, those folks have a similar association, and they have been taking part in these summits. Why is that important? It's important because they are the major counties, uh, like San Bernardino, those places which represent even larger numbers of, sh of sheriff's deputies than, than we do. But we have come together, and I think it's really paramount to, to talk about this. We've come together, and just last night, we issued a, a press release nationally. Uh, you can look that up on the National Sheriff Association uh, website or, or Facebook. And basically what we what we're doing, because we're not getting the support we believe you all deserve in Congress, that you all deserve uh, from our, our administration in the White House, we are now taking upon ourselves to call out the true criminals that are driving the fentanyl epidemic, the sex trafficking, the human trafficking crisis in our country, and the two prominent players are the Sinaloa Cartel and the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. We have actually named, named them publicly for the first time ever. And so we are calling them out, we're calling from the American people to do something about the devastation and damage these, these transcontinental criminal organizations are doing to our country. And we consider it very strongly a national security threat. Without any question, we are asking Congress and the President of the United States to declare them as a terrorist organization for what they're doing to this country. So I felt it's important to announce that those are the types of meetings I have the privilege to attend and represent you all at. We had six days of those meetings and committee meetings. I serve on at least six committees for you on the national shares, including border security and government affairs. We're on the vice chairman of the government affairs for our, our national program. Those are the issues that we're dealing with back there. Those are the issues that every one of our representative shares came from across the country to, to convene and talk about. And we do believe we're moving the needle, but it's a slow push. It's hard, but it's a big lift, and I'm honored that I'm able to go back and do that. And we'll be meeting, of course, uh, we're going to be on the border in Texas in McAllen in April, and we'll be taking up these same issues, and we'll give the people who join us in McAllen, Texas in April at our Southwest Border Sheriff's and Texas Border Sheriff's meeting a chance to tour the border and see for themselves what's happening to our good men and women in Customs and Border Protection and our Sheriff's officers who are literally dying on the, on the streets down there in this fight against the cartels. So, uh, I don't ever give very cheery speeches anyway, so it's not out of the ordinary, but I do want to bring that up because it's important that we all know the magnitude of what this day is about and celebrating what you all do, what these officers are being recognized for because of the fight that we're in to keep America safe and to keep the public safe. Um, I'm obviously known for giving some quotes, and I thought this was appropriate talking about what I just gave to you. Uh, this is a quote by John, Ke John F. Kennedy, our former president, and I, and I quote, Change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present or present are certain to miss the future. And I think that's very appropriate for what we're seeing, what's happening in this country. And moving into the, to the uh, presentations, Another quote from uh, President Kennedy, we must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. And that's what today's about. And that's what this agency is about. The chief and I, our past chief, welcome. Chief DeShiel is here, and I would be remiss if I didn't recognize our commissioners. Commissioner Van Beek, thank you. Commissioner Brad Holden, who we saw. Commissioner Zach Brooks, thank you all for attending. It's very important that you're here. We appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to join us for this important uh, ceremony. So, Bunny will kind of keep me on track, or she'll try to, right? And we're going to start with our years of service pins. Um, if we can get, when I call upon your name, if we can get these people to come up to my left. Uh, I'll start out with the, our five years of service. These are pins. Uh, given to people who have completed a number of years uh, with the sheriff's office, or years of service rather, and uh, we'll start with our five years of service. They go in five-year increments, if you don't know that. So we'll start with, if I call your name, please, please join me. Connie Doan, if you come forward. Uh, Megan, are we doing these? In? We're going to get you in line, then, then someone's going to push them in and them out. So stay close. 
<laughs> Megan Ong, Deputy Rodney Steinmetz, Deputy Adam Isla, Deputy Justin Solis, Deputy Vanessa Lopez, Deputy Kelsey Rush, Deputy Jonathan Herrick, Deputy Michael Davis, Corporal Matthew Hayes, Corporal Hayden Stauffer, Corporal Travis Hoodheimer, where's, where's Reimer? Is Reimer here? Did I say that incorrectly? I did. Out. 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 Okay. So the time I screwed it up, I apologize in advance. I told I told Buddy that was wrong. By the time we're done, Joe and I'll have money kind of worked out on this system how it works. She's got a new nickname that I don't know if she wants me to give it to her in front of you all. If you're a Star Trek fan like I am for many, almost all my life, so you might remember he of nine who was assimilated by the board. Seven or nine. Seven nine. So seven nine was assimilated. I'm just saying. See? Now. <laughs> She's a little bit uh, detail oriented. How's that? Very detail oriented. <laughs> Mike knows what I'm talking about. Uh, I also should recognize former Chief Deputy Mark Show. I did a little bit, but officially, and of course, Captain Mike Armstrong are here as well. So, uh, 10 years of service. Uh, Doug Ward, if he's if he here, is he working? Doug Ward, Sharon Strauss, Deputy Robert Vandershans, Detective Nicholas Whittier, Wow. Uh, if we want to do it over, I can do the same thing. <laughs> Deputy Robert Robert Miles. Sergeant Chad Bingham. I guess that's the end of the tent. Years of service pins uh, Jill Hoover, 
Sherry Kelly, Christine Wendelsdorf. Where's the blues? Hello. Ooh, yeah. Hello. You're welcome. <laughs> Deputy Kyle Maven, Corporal Kyle Agenbrod, Corporal Daniel Combs. to the 20 years of service and as I go through this number just think about that what that means 20 years of service in law enforcement that's a that's a significant five years is significant 10 years 15 they, it, it all plays a huge role in the operation of this ship and moving forward and uh, now we're moving into 20 years of service two decades and all the people that I'm going to mention and I'm going to have come stand those that are here have all received their gold badges when you get to the 20 year uh, mark you receive a gold badge in this business and so uh, also you get that when you're in the detective division as well but if I could have Irene Hernandez come forward Sergeant Dane Phillips Detective Patricia Rabdow <laughs> she probably deserves two Lieutenant Doug Gately. <laughs> That's kind of lacking for you, bud. <laughs> you can say it. Lieutenant Brian Crawford. I did not do any of that. <laughs> Five years of service, a quarter of a century. Communications assistant manager Rob Reynolds. Communications manager Roxanne Wade. Deputy David Phelps. And Detective Greg Folk. Hopefully, Greg can join us, but uh, tre tremendous accomplishment 25 years of service.
And last but not least, and for an amazing number of years, for 30 years of dedicated service, Communications Assistant Manager, Melinda Chenoweth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you to all of you, and Melinda, that's just a, just a tremendous recognition, really, for all this, all the things that you do for us and have done for us over all these many years. It's uh, really astounding, 30 years, and we're going to hang on to you for 30 more, just so you stay the place can't operate without you, so the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, right? Right, right Seven? <laughs> All right, so next I'd like to move to the transfers and promotions. Uh, those recipients who have been granted a transfer or received a promotion uh, since the last award ceremony, and I think some of these are these ones that some of my letters didn't get out, but I, I have rectified that, so if you had not received your letters, that's on the sheriff, that's not on anyone else, that's my responsibility, and I apologize for, for not getting those out to you. I did took care of that upon getting off the airplane. So that is done. Um, this is really important because we see people moving to different divisions, different sections within our sheriff's office to augment or to pursue uh, different disciplines that they want to within the agency, but also with their promotions, and, and especially moving up in the, up in the uh, in the ladder, if you will, of, of our share association, <clears throat> incredibly, incredibly imperative that we see that movement, that we're training the next leaders of this agency and beyond. So if I could have, are we, we're having everyone just come up here and taking, and we're gonna hand them the letters and then take a group photo, correct? Uh, and some, some of the guys might not be here if they're uh, with the City County Narcotics Unit, but I can, I'll read out the names anyway. So Sherry, Sherry Kelly, transfer to City County Narcotics Unit. Deputy Justin Scott, transfer to CCNU. Deputy Ken Nicodemus. Um, is that right? No. 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 Transferred out. You have to train. I didn't catch it. My, my error. Okay, Ken Nicodemus, transfer to uh, CCNU. Yeah, if you just hold your applause till later. Uh, Ken Nicodemus, transfer to City County Narcotics Unit. Lieutenant Martin Flores, transferred, transferred as a lieutenant to Field Services Criminal Investigation Division. Deputy Brian, or Darren Bradshaw is transferred to Security Services Inmate Control from, uh, from uh, classifications. Deputy Dolan Adams, transferred to Field Services Patrol. Deputy Brian Richard, transferred to Field Services Patrol. Deputy Stephen Roberts, transferred to Field Services Patrol. Deputy Kevin Maynard, Transfer to Field Services Patrol. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mary Ann Davis, transfer to Sur Security Services Inmate Control. Deputy William Hamilton, transfer to Security Services Inmate Control. Sergeant Bryce Moore, transfer to Field Services as a Sergeant, City County Narcotics Unit. Deputy Jonathan Herrick, transfer to Field, field Services Criminal Investigations Division as a detective. Mm -hmm. Deputy William Dillon, transfer to Security Services in the Courts. That's, that's it, right? Okay, so we're going to hand you guys your letters, and then we'll wait for a group photo if you don't mind. They've already got them. We're so efficient around here, so I told you they'd get worked out. Okay. Or I should have prayed. Next, we're moving to uh, promotions. Uh, we're having these people come forward, correct? Evangelina, Oregon. 
uh, was promoted to administrative special senior administrative specialist. Excuse me, deputy deputy Stephen Craig was promoted to corporal. Deputy Isaac Hodges was promoted to corporal. There probably should be a woo on that one. Yes. <laughs> Only because I know he'd want that. As, and I didn't do it for deputy or for corporal. Craig, because you know, whatever, but uh, <laughs> not that he wouldn't want it, but Hodges just seems to have to have that. <laughs> I'm referring back to the video that we did, right? And your, your singing abilities in the car. <laughs> so cool. Without further ado, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and continue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Garrett McCray, promoted to corporal. Corporal Sean Weigel. Promoted sergeant. Sprinkles! Sprinkles! <laughs> Corporal Jace Thompson, promoted sergeant. Corporal Russ Donnelly, promoted to lieutenant. <laughs> and and not last but last but not least, at, uh, if we have Lieutenant Chuck Gentry, who was promoted to captain. <laughs> Wrong way. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the building, so that's a good start. <laughs> you made it to the right room. I'm here. I like it. Um, so we can, if we could have uh, Chuck, is your wife here present? Yeah. If we could have prettiest one in the room. Right? Mrs. Gentry, come forward. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we didn't tell anybody, but we'd like you to pin the badge on your new captain if you don't mind. Oh, wow. Cool. Recognitions. Thank you for doing that impromptu. We appreciate it. We we didn't warn you on purpose. We didn't want Captain Jeffrey to screw it up somehow. So. Why are you hiring me, boss? I know. It's awesome. Um, next, we're going to do the um, employees of the month. So each month, we we recognize the command staff receives nominations for the last six months of, of individuals who have gone above and beyond call of duty in their particular sections. And so we recognize them uh, with the employee of the Sheriff's Office for that particular month. Again, these nominations are given to the command staff and they're thoroughly vetted and then voted upon by the command staff themselves to award that individual. So if I have my first one up here, the employee of the month for September 2022, Deputy Cherie Wright. If you could join me at the podium. <laughs> Deputy Wright was nominated by Sergeant Jordan Hammond. And what, basically what I do is I read you the nomination. Deputy Wright is dedicated and hardworking and often goes above and beyond, exceeding the goals set by our team. 
Deputy Wright is a full-time peer training officer. She regularly trains new deputies and is always willing to do whatever is necessary to help them achieve their goals. She's willing to go out of her way to ensure new deputies are trained properly so they can have continued success within the Sheriff's Office. Deputy Wright also volunteers on her days off to come in and teach new, new hire classes. She has a wealth of knowledge to share and delivers it in such a way that makes it a positive impact. Deputy Wright has volunteered to keep track of the many Spillman logs and recreation schedule logs that the team is required to complete for every shift. Her attention to detail has resulted in her team having the fewest, fewest missed logs of all the teams year to date. This is just a small, selfless example of her dedication to her team and represents that she will go the extra mile to ensure team success. Deputy Wright is heavily relied upon upon her team and supervisors and never fails them due to her dedication to the team. Deputy Wright is very deserving of this recognition and it's important she understands how valuable she is, not only to our team, but the Candy County Sheriff's Office as a whole, which is why I, Sergeant Hammond, am submitting for Deputy Submitting for Deputy Shuri Wright to be CCSO Employee of the Month for September 2022. I am deliberately moving the October Employee of the Month to the end of this because there's an additional award that that individual is going to receive. So we'll, we'll bounce back to October and we'll move to November. November 22, we have two uh, persons who have been nominated for Employee of the Month and are awarded that uh, designation. If I can have Deputy Justin May and Corporal Zach Karais come to the podium, please. His wife's a lot better than he is, does <laughs> Grandpa. Uh, the both of you have been nominated by Captain Bill Patchett, Security Services Captain. And Bill states, I would like to nominate both Zach, Corporal Zach Rice and Deputy Justin May for Employees of the Month for November. I've attached two letters thanking Corporal Rice and Deputy May for their outstanding participation in two events. Corporal Kreis and Deputy May are members of the Canyon County Honor Guard. When asked, when asked, both are willing to give up their personal time, their personal time, their time off, and represent the Sheriff's Office in a very positive manner. In the attached letters, you can see the positive impact these two have shown to members of the public and the positive reflection on the Sheriff's Office. I'd like to read those two letters if I may. Sheriff, I want to pass on my thanks to your Honor Guard for their help at yesterday's annual Veterans Day breakfast at the Warhawk Museum. I reached out to form a joint honor guard and Deputy May responded and brought himself and one other deputy to help out along with Boise Police Department and pipes, their pipes and drums. Our lead honor guard member retired last year and I was asked to take over. I don't have much experience and yesterday I was struggling to form a plan that would look worthy of the several hundred veterans in attendance at the breakfast. Your deputy stepped up and helped create a plan to honor those veterans, veterans in a sharp way. <clears throat> I just wanted to extend my thanks and appreciation to Deputy May for his leadership and professionalism yesterday. Please pass along my thanks. I look forward to working with your honor guard again in the future. Officer Sally Miller, Nampa Police Department, School Resources Division, Skyview High School. Second letter. To the leadership staff of the Canyon County, County Sheriff's Office, I would like to take a moment to send out a heartfelt thank you to the Candy County Sheriff's Office and, and in particular Deputies May and Carice. Justin and Zach represented you with tremendous professionalism, grace, and honor. As a color guard, they were able to give our students a glimpse of what it means to honor our flag and our country. This is a glaring need in today's success society. In addition to their presentation of the colors, the donation of the shadow box and the trifolded flag, along with the Candy County Sheriff's patch, which was received with awe and enthusiasm by our staff and students. 
It will be centrally located for all students and visitors to see for a long time. Finally, I'd like to extend a personal thank you as the principal of Valley View, Valley View Middle School. It is very important to me to help our kids understand what it be, means to be an American and to recognize the sacrifice of those who serve and have served in defense of our country. I believe they should be revered for defending our freedom, much like you and all of your, our first responders. To that end, I must, acknowledge, I must acknowledge the amazing speech given to our 7th and 8th grade students by Deputy May. His message about his personal journey of service and what he encountered was awe-inspiring and delivered in a manner that captivated our students and staff who were fortunate enough to hear. He was the perfect finish to the message we were attempting to convey. One final note, I was also incredibly lucky to have one of the best SROs in the state working in my building. Deputy Hambly is not only considered a part of our staff, but he has become part of the Valview Middle School family. His presence on our campus is a large reason we have a successful school culture here. We consider ourselves fortunate to be able to work with him every day. Thank you again, and please know the partnership we feel with the Candy County Sheriff's Office is incredibly strong, and we look forward to working with you in any capacity we can. With great appreciation, Todd Sucker, Principal, Valley View Middle School. Job well done. be a bad sign of your award you just got. <laughs> I thought you fixed all that before you left. I may point out that you guys are keeping it in the family, rather the right family, right I should say, by receiving awards. Pretty cool. Most of it's pretty cool. Cherie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm the right man. Hey. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I want to jump back to something that was stated by the principal. It's very important for all of us. And just brings up a point that something I'm working on on the national level. And that is our SROs in our schools. So uh, Deputy Hamley is here. I'm not sure. Yes, no. Uh, I have just authored a resolution and, and it was passed unanimously in the school uh, uh, in the school justice, uh, let's see, juvenile justice and school resource, something like that, I can't remember the title of it, but it's, it's for Juvenile Justice Committee, the National Sheriff Association, and I just authored a, a resolution that's been passed to the board of directors that they'll consider in June. I'll be part of that board. Uh, we will consider that resolution to pass on uh, to, to the Congress and to the President of the United States to find the funding to make the funding available to put an SRO in every school in the United States. For obviously the security reasons to contain a, a potential hazardous or harmful violent situation, but secondly, the second part of that resolution I wrote was to bring uh, SROs into schools for students to have a positive mentor to be around each and every day to lean on and to also find trust in law enforcement that they that they're seen uh, not just in the schools but on the streets of their communities so with hope we'll have that passed in june and we'll move it on and, and we, we're going to keep pushing until somebody's listening we really believe strongly that that needs to happen so uh let's see we're moving to december yeah. not uh this is a if i could have deputy adam isla come forward he's not here Yes, no? no? Okay. I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, Deputy Isla was nominated by Corporal Isaac Hodges. And, and it states, Adam continued his tradition of preparing and serving homemade lumpia. lumpia. Thank you. A Filipino and Ind Indonesian spring roll for the jail staff working Christmas Eve night and Christmas Day. Adam created this tradition to give his appreciation for his fellow deputies that are not able to be home with their families for the holiday. In preparation, Adam organizes friends, family, and co-workers to his house to make lumpia on his days off. 
the time, effort, and cost Adam has dedicated to show his appreciation during the Christmas season is a huge inspiration to all members of the Sheriff's Office family. So if we can, please uh, give a nice, warm thank you to that. check with seven to see where I was at. So if I could have, uh, falling back to October, uh, employee of the month, and then the next uh, award, if I could have Megan Moyer come forward, please. Megan here. Thank you for being patient. So not only was Megan nominated for Employee of the Month, and I'm going to read that nomination. That nomination actually went forward, forward to another committee, which I'll explain in just a moment. You were nominated, Megan, by Communications Manager Roxanne Wade. On October 23rd, and it states, on October 23rd, 2022, Megan answered a 911 call from a Marine, a Marine Corporal veteran whom has suffered from uh, PTSD for the last eight years. The corporal told Megan he called the suicide hotline. However, they were not able to help him. The male said he was having suicidal thoughts, but did not want to harm himself, and just wanted to talk to someone who might talk him down and tell him everything would be okay, and didn't want to get to that point he was going to do something. Megan told the caller that officers were on the way and she was going to talk to him until an officer arrived. Megan built a rapport with the caller during the 14 minutes on the phone. She listened to him and was calm, reassuring, empathetic to his situation and told him, glad you called. The caller told Megan at the end of the call, you did a great job. I'm glad I got you as my dispatcher. Two days later on October 25, 2022, Caldwell Police Corporal Eldridge responded to a welfare check for the caller. <coughs> When Corporal Eldridge completed the call, he contacted dispatch to share the caller's appreciation for Megan. The caller said she saved his life. She was phenomenal, awesome for talking him down. Everything that happened two days earlier reflected on him being happy and here today was because of Megan. Corporal Eldridge said the caller thinks the world of you. Corporal Eldridge, Eldridge stated that this was the first time in 21 years he has heard that much credit for a dispatcher. Good job. Megan has four years experience as a 911 communications officer. It's clear based on this nomination that she used her, her skills, knowledge, and experience to help the caller in need. So with that, Megan, I'm going to award you the Employee of the Month plaque. The next section is our ribbons and medals. And this, this uh, validation of Megan's efforts was passed on to the awards committee. And the awards committee has reviewed the nominations that we will see today and presented them. And I have conferred, confirmed with the nomination committee my uh, absolute support for their decisions. And today we start with the good conduct ribbon. The Good Conduct Ribbon is awarded to members who perform an act of humanity to those in need by attending to them in time of crisis, accident, or danger, and providing them with understanding and confidence. And today, Megan Meyer is going, Meyer, am I saying it wrong? Meyer. Meyer, I said it right the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Megan, as we discussed in the Employee of the Month section of these awards, the 911 call you took from a Marine Corporal veteran who has been suffering from PTSD for the last eight years. You saved his life with the comments made from him. You were there in his moment of need, and I'll again quote from that submission. Megan saved my life. You did a phenomenal job, and you did an awesome job of talking him down. And the reason he's here today with us and could meet with Corporal Elders is because of your efforts. So Megan, with, with your efforts, 
I am proud to present to you the, the Good Conduct Ribbon. Next uh, award is the Life Saving Medal and Ribbon. We actually have seven of these, these today. That's an astounding number, but it also goes to show the good work that our deputies are doing in the field. The Life Saving Medal is, is intended for all Sheriff's Office members directly responsible for saving a human life. I will read the individual's nomination, then I will award the ribbon. Please come to the podium when I call your name. If I could have the first three, if I recall, uh, right, Mr. Jeff, Deputy Shamin Elsfelder, Els El 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 how bad was it? Uh, <laughs> 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 My name's Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody calls me Ice. I'm Ice Felder. Ice Felder. Had my <laughs> assistant. Told me that before I got here. I played my mom forever. She called me Sue. Maybe Sue. Karen. Karen. It made me a lot tougher in my young years. Uh, don't even think about it. Uh, Corporal Hayden Stoffer. And Deputy Jacob Brush. Um, this is the this is the nomination to the award committee. On 12 16 2022, at approximately uh, 1508 hours, Deputy Shamin Eisfelder, Deputy Jacob Rush, and Corporal Aiden Stoffer responded to an inter intercom call coming from uh, T204 and Pod 6, our living unit in Pod 6, for the, for the female inmates. When Deputy Eisfelder arrived, to the cell, she saw an inmate lying on the floor in the back of the cell. The inmate was unresponsive, not breathing, and her face was bluish purple in color. Deputy Eisfelder immediately started cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, on the inmate until medical and other deputies arrived. When both Deputy Rush and Corporal Stauffer rotated with Deputy Eisfelder on CPR and chest compressions on the inmate for several, they, they, they rotated, uh, for several inmates while a uh, medical evaluated the patient. Due to Deputy Eisfelder, Deputy Rush, and Corporal Stauffer's quick response and life-saving measures, the inmate left the jail with a pulse and made a full recovery. And I'll note that this is Deputy Eisfelder's second life-saving award. So I'd like to present this all. Yes, as a second life-saving award, you already have the ribbon. Metal and this will can be pinned on or, or glued to that so it shows that you've done this twice in your in your profession or your experience here. Congratulations. I could have uh, the next two who have been nominated for a life saving medal. If I could have Deputy Thomas Thomas Gomez and Deputy Crystal Gonzalez, please come forward. Uh, the, the committee received this uh, nomination on January 2nd, 2023, at approximately 2100 hours. 
Deputy Crystal Gonzalez responded to a booking holding cell where an inmate had knocked on the door. The inmate advised, man down. Deputy Gonzalez responded quickly into the cell as she saw an inmate had hung himself inside the cell. While entering the cell, Deputy Gonzalez called out to her teammates for assistance. Deputy Gonzalez grabbed the inmate and lifted him up so the pressure on his neck was lessened. She held on to him until her partner arrived and was better able to help lift the inmate. Deputy Tom, Thomas Gomez quickly uh, came quickly to the book in holding cell where Deputy Gonzalez had requested help. Deputy Gomez, upon entering, grabbed the inmate, inmate and lifted him up so the pressure on his neck was lessened and the tension on the improvised hanging device was removed. He held on to the inmate while Deputy Gonzalez began to tear through the blanket which the inmate had used to hang himself. Due to the thickness of the blanket, Deputy Gonzalez had to physically tear through the blanket and nailing the inmate to be placed on the ground for further life-saving methods. The inmate was unconscious, not breathing, and blue in color. Once on the ground, Deputy Gonzalez started CPR. The inmate became conscious within a short time frame and attempted to disrupt life-saving measures. Deputy Gonzalez placed him in handcuffs and was advised the inmate had gone unconscious again and no longer had a pulse. Deputy Gonzalez continued CPR and was once again able to revive the inmate. Deputy Gomez and Deputy Gonzalez stayed with the inmate until EMS arrived and he was transported to the hospital for further evaluation. The, late, the inmate was later discharged and returned to custody. Yes, please. That's the type of people we produce here. That's the people that have saved this man's life. Regardless, we both acted it and saved a human life, and we appreciate what your efforts were. Thank you for breaking that small little fact inside the door. Right? Thank you once again, please. And, that, and why we, when we, as we move to the next thing, it's really, um, it's really important to realize that these deputies, and they're trained by us, by our staff. The philosophy is the same, has been for many years. And upon getting hired, going to work in the detention center, it's we drilled it, drilled it upon them, and they're very uh, obviously responded to to our instruction and to our philosophy that we have. These people who come to jail, a lot of them are coming into jail on the worst days of their lives. Bar none. It's just the worst day for them in their lifetimes. It's not our job to be the judge and jury. That's someone else's job. Our job is safety and security of that facility and the care and custody of that individual. Regardless of that, feeding, providing shelter, providing the blankets, the clothing, the answering of kites, uh, getting them to and from court. It's our job to protect their rights as individuals under our Constitution and protect them while they're in our custody. So just just kind of underscores, this could be the most ornery, uh, belittling, uh, rude inmate in the world. That's all set aside when we're there to take care of them and save a human life. And that's what these people showed once again. So thank you, deputies. I appreciate that. Okay, we're nearing the end, right? <laughs> Which, okay, so I'm going to our new award. I can now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so uh, we have we have developed a new award. Uh, this is the very first time it's ever been awarded, and this will be, we hope, a probably an annual. Award no no less than annual. Uh, 
award for special special recognition. And today we'd like to call up uh, uh, Joe Decker to the podium. If you could, Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's take photos. Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We like redundancy. Get closer. Up in the middle. So Joe, Joe Decker, public information officer for uh, for Canyon County, but Joe, as you all know, is a shared employee uh, for uh, obviously the answers to the board of county commissioners, but he's a shared employee for all of us elected officials. That includes Brian Taylor, myself, and Chris Yamamoto, the clerk. Those are the three primaries that he does work for. And then, of course, is, makes himself available to all other elected officials as well, including, of course, the uh, Board of County Commissioners. But there's so much that Joe does for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we, as a, as a command team, decided that we would come up with something to recognize you for what you have done for us and what you continue to do for us, for what you've done for us over the last 11 years uh, that I've been the Sheriff. And, that, uh, and this is lengthy, so I apologize in advance. I'll try to skim through it. But... Joe gets requests daily from news teams, reporters, media, other PIOs, people that have known Joe before he became a PIO, and then all the years he's been with the county. And that makes our transition pretty easy when I'm dealing with the media. And, and I probably deal with the media more than anybody else. I don't know why that is. It might be I'm outspoken at the moment. But uh, we certainly do our share of stories. But some of the good stories that we do is projects and Joe the first one on the list is the KTBB Channel 7 corridor series that you helped organize and produce uh, back in 2017. Joe helped me organize and produce a program where I took to the border. I took a, an NBC affiliate here in town and took their reporters uh, Tammy Tremblay and one of their senior um, videographers uh, literally took them to the border and said this is what's actually happening down there. That was coming on eight years ago. <clears throat> We're not, we haven't solved this thing yet, but we're, we're getting closer. Actually, six years ago, I should say. Uh, we put that story together. We brought it. I know Stephen Craig. Where'd you go? Stephen Craig is highlighted in that video, as many other people in this, in this room, uh, in our agency. It was, a, it was a daunting task, taking her down there, uh, recording on the border, putting ourselves at risk with the cartels, including the news team. We had a bad incident down there with the cartels in Douglas, Arizona. We all got out safe. They don't like us. They, they certainly don't like the news down there. And uh, but we came back. We finished it by showing what the by showing how the dope gets across that border, gets up through the corridor, and then ends up in our schools. And I know that we went out to Middleton. I think it was Middleton High School, and, and then we did interdiction out on the interstate. At any rate, long-winded statement to say that, that that series went on to win a national Edward R. Murrow Award for journalism uh, by KTVB and. That's just one small part. I know that that was my highlight uh, to list it here. Uh, then, of course, you helped with the, uh, Joe nominated the uh, County County Sheriff's Office in 2017 for the prestigious Victim Crime Services Award by the National Sheriff's Association. Realize that that award is only awarded to one Sheriff's Office of over 3,000 in the nation a year. And the County County Sheriff's Office Based on Joe Decker's nomination, we received that award in 2017. We flew a bunch of, we took a lot of people to Reno and uh, took acceptance of that award, and that was really through your efforts. This list goes long, it goes forever. Uh, all the programs, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month, Shop with a Sheriff Christmas, Shop with a Cop Program, Back to School Backpack Programs, the uh, annual Halloween Trunk or Tree Program that you, you instrumental in, Numerous local and national news stories highlighting uh, the Canyon County Sheriff's Office employees and achievements, including the popular KTV Seven Heroes, Seven's Heroes, and that was with uh, Gilbert, and the Left Back uh, Shop with the Cop program. Uh, in, also in June of 17, uh, we, we just experienced one of the most heinous crimes in history of the state of Idaho, a triple homicide. Uh, Mike Bollinger, the alleged suspect, uh, that was a very hard time. Uh, for our agency, we had crime scenes in three states, and we, uh, we had to manage national media on that. And then we came, following the national media, we had national syndicated shows such as Crime Watch Daily and In Pursuit with John Walsh that Joe helped coordinate and accommodate with me going on their national programs. You've uh, assisted, 
uh, I was talking to uh, Sam Lahey the other day about the years of COVID, and I think Commissioner Van Beek, I think you were commissioner, I know you were commissioner back then. Um, what we went through, you all went through hell with COVID, right? But what we went through as a county, we couldn't shut our doors, we couldn't shut down. And we had to come up with plans. And we met in this room, what, every, every day for two weeks, and every week for two years, uh, practically. And Joe, you and Christine and Sam uh, were just instrumental in moving the county forward with, your, with the PPE and the warehousing and doing things that really aren't in your job descriptions. But you guys uh, helped us tremendously. Um, you're a founding member of the of the Peace Officers Memorial. I think we're going to our 11th year here in Canyon County. Yourself and and uh, Reverend Ross Blue couldn't be here today. Uh, I, we couldn't go over the number of things that you video the videos and annual things that you've done for our office and trying to make sure that we have best representation in the media and to the public. Uh, my program, I, I just presented in Washington, D.C. again on death, drugs, and destruction on the border. I'm asked to give that presentation internationally now on regarding uh, China's alliance with Mexico and the cartels and the, the distribution of meth and fentanyl and the destruction across that border. That program, Joe works with me a lot on making sure I know what I'm saying and how I'm saying it and the delivery. Um, but this, this list goes on and on. I asked people to help me out with this. Um, Years and years and years of, of interviews, and now I'm uh, somewhat of a regular uh, contributor to Fox Fox Television. Uh, that's all. That's all scheduled through Joe, actually, and the Lawrence Jones Show. That's a lot of fun. When we did that, he came out. Uh, the No Greater Law documentary. If you haven't seen that, we filmed here in Canyon County for a year and a half with an independent film crew. Then became an A and E uh, sponsored film. And after a year and a half of filming, right here at the Canyon County Sheriff's Office. Uh, with several people again in the room who were who were uh, profiled on that on that uh, film, cinematic documentary. It went on to this. It's a it's a premiere. It's world premiere at Tribeca Film Festival in New York City, and then went on to uh, gain a, a very a very nice nomination for the International Emmy Award. Uh, and that was all done right here in Canyon County. Ah, oh, geez, I don't know the jail education stuff. I'm going to skip over. Uh, <laughs> Long time ago, uh, Prosecutor Taylor's uh, stuff on da uh, with Prosecutor and I on David Dalrymple on uh, the Darrell Johnson case, 30 year old murder, when we had to do press conferences on that, national attention once again, and then of course the uh, ex extraction or extradition rather of Rasmo Diaz, who has just now pled guilty uh, for his murder, uh, alleged murder of his wife in, in uh, Alton Wilder, and getting him back from Mexico. Uh, your reputation is well known in the state of Idaho, especially in the Treasure Valley. When people call upon you, they get an answer. When they call upon, uh, they want an elected official to be interviewed, whether it's radio, television, or print media, you manage that. And uh, you balance it with not having your personal agenda in mind or your personal opinion, so you make sure that all of us and Brian Taylor, who couldn't be here today, and others uh, get to the podium to tell our story. Uh, you're well respected. You, you make sure the Canyon County Sheriff's Office stands above, above the rest. We, we, are, we are considered, if not the premier, one of the premier sheriff's offices in the, in the state and maybe in, in the country. And I think a lot of that is due to your efforts, quite frankly. I sincerely mean that. You have given me knowledge and guidance and uh, technical and professional expertise on delivery and and how to tell our narrative, right? And that's not an easy task, especially trying to control me to a very good narrative instead of what I really want to say most of the time. So I, I've given great thought to this, and uh, my team worked very hard on this, um, Martin Flores and Bunny and others, and this is a, this is a, this is a one time, this is our first time we've ever done this, uh, well, we are very excited to honor you, and I'm going to read this plaque if that's right with everyone. Uh, we're calling it the Star Award, the Sheriff's Star. <coughs> the Canyon County Sheriff's Office presents on this day, February 10th, 2023, the Sheriff's Star to Joe Decker, a recognition of over a decade of outstanding service in support of the mission of the Canyon County Sheriff's Office. And I put a quote on this plaque. 
quote, you have been a pillar in the foundation of our work. We wouldn't be where we are today without you, end of quote, Sheriff Donahue. And it's got my name and the Chief Deputy's name at the bottom of the plaque. So, Joe, congratulations and thank you for what you do for us. Next, I'd like to go to uh, those who have moved on to retirement from our Sheriff's Office. And of course, I'd like to personally congratulate the, the individuals on the retirement for the incredible many years of, of dedicated service, their sacrifice, and uh, what they've done for this agency, Ken County Sheriff's Office, but really what they've done for humanity and for the public. And again, it doesn't matter how long you serve in this agency, the years of sacrifice you give to you and your family give up, because the family rides this this train every day with, with these officers. It doesn't matter if, if we're working undercover somewhere, if we're working in the jail, if we're working on patrol, working dispatch, ad techs, it doesn't matter what job you do here, the business can't run without every single one of you, but I can assure you that every single one of your families are riding that, that day, that night or day shift with you because you're not home. And if you're in the field, and if you're carrying a gun, they don't know if you will come home. And so, a lot of stress, a lot of sacrifice, and we recognize that. And I think that's something that we as professionals in law enforcement haven't recognized enough over the years. And I can tell you from the national level, we're just now starting to figure out how much we've been behind in officer wellness and family wellness because our eyes have always been on the target and the mission. And sometimes, we forget about those who are getting us into the car, getting us into the field, getting that done, and that on us. But the silver lining is that we are making a shift as national sheriffs, as national law enforcement, to correct our, our missteps. And as your sheriff, I can tell you that we're making this a high priority to correct that, and uh, so you have my pledge. But with that, uh, we hope you've all found success and happiness in your in your in your lives. I know Captain Armstrong is a new grandfather. I've given very expert advice on how to handle that being a new grandpa. Uh, told him to at two years old he can come to your house. <laughs> Don't change any diapers, that's what these people are for. <laughs> so far it's working good. But anyway. Wow, I'm going to get so beat up on this. <laughs> I'm so glad Jeannie's not here. She was going to come, too. I couldn't have said what I just said. Uh, if I could have, uh, I'm going to call your name and the years of service, and I can have you all come up here, please. Barbara Town, five years of service. Please come forward. Where's the Spurgeon come forward, 21 years of service. Is Margaret here today? Mike, is she here? Uh, I thought she was going to be here too. She got a special cake. She did get a special cake. <laughs> Margaret, I, she's never done anything else other than CCNU, has she? So Margaret Spurgeon has been our city, county, narcotics officer, or unit administrator for the last 21 years. So she has been housed with our narcotics division in covert off-site locations for the last 21 years. And she decided that when her captain, Mike Armstrong, was going to retire this year, she said, I'm going to take the same opportunity and go out on the same day. So she did, and uh, roughly within the same few days. And uh, we just want to honor Margaret for her literally 21 years of doing analysis and getting the guys in the field and talking about somebody who didn't know if their team was going to come back at night. That's Margaret Spurgeon, but she's been a, a pillar of our community and a pillar of the sheriff's office. So, want to recognize her. So, please, with in her absence. <laughs> and 
And next, and I'm going in, in the order of years of service, if I could have retired Captain Mike Armstrong come to the podium. <laughs> Twenty-seven years of dedicated service. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It is actually clear. Twenty-seven years. That's uh, that's uh, amazing, and we uh, we we we're, we're, we're going to miss you. But thank you. And Mike, how many years in the military? Eight. Eight years is what I thought. And Mike also was a bomb technician on the bomb squad here in Treasure Valley for 18, 15 years. So a man of dedicated service. Next, if I could have retired Deputy Robert Johnson come to the podium, 35 years. years, I mean, never, I would never let him grow that goatee, so. <laughs> I mean, he could look, he looks like an art. <laughs> we have some more, we have some work to do still, so, you know, we may call you. You need a job, rubber? We <laughs> have fun. 35 years. And next, if I could have retired Chief Deputy, Marv Schill, come to the podium. 35 years. Yeah, yeah, there's a trend I can see happening. Look at these three. Thank you, Barb, for, for uh, showing good now. Uh, just think of the combined years of service that I just mentioned with these four individuals alone and what they did. And, and Chief Deputy just retired this last fall. Uh, my goodness, 30, 35 years and the amount of work that he did and, and literally literally uh, had a role in just every position that we have in our structure, including chief deputy and my chief deputy for 10 years, 10 plus years. Well, about 10 years, I guess it was. 10 years. And so uh, just really appreciate what you guys, what you all have done, what you've committed. So thank you so much. And I so hope you enjoy your retirement. And uh, I hope you all stay and enjoy the cake that we prepared for Mike and for Margaret. But, but please uh, be here and, and take part in it. So. If we can get one more, one more photo. With that, I went long, I apologize keeping you here, but I, I really do appreciate everybody coming here. I appreciate the commissioners, I know you're all busy, thank you for being here to share with what we have in our, with our, our deputies and our retirees, the years that they've committed under, under this program, under this office. Uh, thank you for the retirees for coming, your families, uh, we couldn't do it without you. And we are a family, as you all know that. We're three, a little over 300 strong family, but we're a family. And uh, I'll, I'll end this with, with, a, with a quote from, again, President John F. Kennedy, a, a, great, a great man. Uh, and I quote, a man does what he must in spite of personal consequences, in spite of obstacles, dangers, and pressures. And that is the basis of humanity, morality. President Kennedy, and I think that what you saw today really codifies what that means and what these people give up to do what they do each and every day. So thank you for coming, thank you for being here, and congratulations to all of you. <laughs>